Well hello everyone, and I've been excited to make this video for the last 7 or 8 hours since I completed this season in Football Manager 2005. As you can see, we are league champions. This is the 11th season in this save. It's the 10th that we've been in the top flight, and we finally, finally finished in pole position, and we are first, which is good. Uh, and so this is a story of how we did it. As you can see, we finished on 75 points, three ahead of Celtic, five ahead of Rangers. We scored the most goals, conceded joint second fewest, we had the best goal difference, won the most games. We did draw a lot, but we, we also lost the second least amount of games. So overall, I think we were well worth our victory come the end of the season. So first of all, I'm going to speak about transfers. There was only three incoming transfers, and two of them happened in January. But the first one came uh, at the start of July. I signed Dean Graham from uh, Hibs, I think. I uh, signed him for free. His contract was running out. As you can see, he's actually a decent defender. Um, his main defence statistics are on 10. It's funny that his attacking statistics have increased to 11. But overall, he's quite a steady defender. He's only 26, so hopefully I'll get a few years out of him. But he played 15 odd games this season, did okay. Our second signing was Albert, who is a Spanish right winger. I signed him as cover. Unfortunately, his pace is lacking. He played six substitute appearances. Didn't do so well, unfortunately, but I'm hoping he can come good. We'll see. And the third signing, Al Albert was signed in January when I realised I needed cover on the right wing. Um, but our third signing is Gary McLaughlin. He's a centre midfielder. He was actually unhappy because I fined him for getting sent off. Or no, I didn't find him. I just gave him a warning. Uh, but he was signed from Linfield and he has done... He's done fairly well since he arrived, so happy to have him on board. Transfers out. Well, that's another story. We lost quite a few key members. Now, if you if you remember last season, my salary budget was exceeded by over £30,000. So I realised I had to cut down this deficit. I had to get rid of players who were unhappy. I had to get rid of players who were maybe a bit old or had maybe been there a long time. And that's what I did. So the first player to leave was Alan Manis. He signed for... Cali on a free. I didn't try to push for any money for him. I just let him go to Cali. Uh, he seems to have done quite well in his first season. A good eight years he played for us. Did really well. So can only be happy with his services. Martin Klein. I let him go to Leicester on a free. Uh, he was a big, big player for us. But I felt I needed to let him go. So he went down to the English Championship. And uh, played a good season with Leicester. Paul Flaherty, he was never going to get a game. He'd only scored about two goals for us. And lo and behold, he scores 12 as soon as he moves to West Ham. It just must be my uh, my tactics that can't get the best out of strikers. Molly McLaren, this, he didn't want to leave and his salary wasn't that big. He went to Watford. He's ended up at Aldershot in League One. He played a few games for Watford in the Championship, uh, but I let him go on a free as well just to get him off the wage budget. Georgius Constanti, he was retiring at the end of last season, but he's he left the club, hasn't found a new one. Michael Byrne was an interesting one, so he was one of the 16-year-olds I brought in from an, uh, an Irish club to my youth setup. The downside is he turned 17 on the 1st of July, which is the day after all the contracts expire. His contract, his 16-year-old contract expired, and he chose to leave, unfortunately. And I was very, very disappointed by this, because he's a really, really good prospect. He's still only 17. I mean, to be fair, he played a bunch of games at Bournemouth in League 2, but I, I just felt I could have got so much out of him. Aaron Lennon also left at a free. He ended up at Luton. Uh, he was unhappy anyway, so hopefully he's more happy down there. I see he's probably <laughs> scored more goals than he did with us. Uh, Graham Smith also left. He was picked up by Corel Alexandra. Played a bunch of games. I, I didn't really get rid of him because he was rubbish. I had keepers, young keepers waiting to get a chance and I thought I might as well get rid of him just so they can get a chance. Now the thing with Aaron Lennon, Graham Smith, Georgius Constanti, their contracts expired. Michael Turner's did not and he was on a hefty wage. He was unhappy. So I ended up terminating his contract by mutual consent and he's ended up at Crew Alexandra as well, playing a bunch of games for them. There was a few other big transfers. Mark Miller, one of our youth players, ended up at Liverpool. I don't really believe it. There was two clubs interested in him, Liverpool and Hamilton. Obviously that's a no-brainer. If Liverpool and Hamilton came in for me, I know which one I would choose. He's been there 
there the whole time. I see he's played 19 games, 9 in the Premiership, 5 in Europe. I can only assume that was the European Cup or the Champions League he played in. So he's actually played games. I never rated him at all. I mean, his rating's not that good, but he just didn't seem Premiership class. He didn't even seem SPL class, which is why I, I got rid of him. Anyway, yeah, he, he left us without playing a single competitive fixture. We then lost Paul Walsh to Birmingham. I was very salty about this because he was 16 at the time. When a player is 16, any team can come and sign him. And I had high hopes for the central defender because his, his stats were just unreal. But Birmingham City came in, signed him. He's played a lot of games. Fair play. He's got himself a good move a premiership side so I can't really complain especially given the fact he's on a higher wage than he was with us and the final major transfer out was Keith Keane now this was in January uh, his contract was expiring in 2016 so he, was, he only had a year and a half left Chapsom Spor from Turkey came in bidded 1.1 million and I thought Let, let's just take the money and I, I let him go which he played an integral role in our championship season he played 17 games overall 15 in the league 2 goals 2 assists I think he deserves a bit of credit for helping us win the league. He was still part of the squad, so quick mention there to Keith Keane. Also, he's been at the club for quite a while too. Is that almost seven years he's been there, been a mainstay in the team, getting good ratings and all that. So those were our transfers. Uh, let's have a look at the main first team squad. Uh, I should point out in our reserve squad, Jason Scotland is still languishing there at the ripe old age of 36. This is his ninth season at the club now. As you can see, his stats have declined a lot. He never played at all this season. I, I don't want to risk it. But he's a staff member now because he's, he's retiring. Well, he's actually retiring in September. See, the awkward thing is I tried to release him because he's on 5.5 grand a week. I tried to release him, but the board said he was too valuable. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, he's definitely not valuable. But, I mean, the board have their opinion. So we've had to pay him 5.5 grand per week, even though there's no chance he's going to get a game. These are his staff stats. I tried to sign him as a scout. He rejected the offer. And now I can't offer him any more than £475 per week. So yeah, he's not going to be signing up in a hurry. Chris Boyd is also retiring. He never played at all this season. I kind of thought I might need him, but in the end I didn't. So he just played reserve team football the whole season. And there was one or two youngsters who, well, a lot of them were out on loan. One or two of them, though, got game time. Uh, just the odd game in the cup or whatever. But this is the main team. This is the championship winning team. One of the things I like about this team is is a lot of them are regens and for those that don't know regens are fake players that are spawned into the game that are generated by the game to keep the game going because if you didn't have regens then all the real footballers would retire and there'd be no one left there'd just be these greyed out players here who have well most of them have awful stats but we've got these regens who come into the game keep it going we've got 16 regens in this team which I mean 11 years into the game you're bound to have a slightly higher than average uh, portion of regens and that's what we've got here. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm pretty happy that a lot of them have developed. Some of them have been developed by like our own club. Some have been bought from other clubs. But let's just go through each player now and I guess just talk about their stacks. Talk about their history. First of all, we've got Richard Kinsey. Originally, I signed him from Connors Key. He's been at the club for a long time. Part of the reason I got rid of our other two keepers, uh, Alan Manus and Graham Smith, was because I had him at the side waiting to come in. And so I thought, right, I better get rid of those two keepers so he can come in. He played 38 games this season, 17 clean sheets, which is a fantastic return. He had a very, very solid season. He certainly saved us on numerous occasions. Paul Hutchison, he was our backup keeper. In some ways, I have more of a, an attachment to him because he started his career at St Johnston. He came out of the club's academy. He's been here for, what, six years, but this is the first season he's been in the first team. Played eight games, four clean sheets. That's not bad. 50% of the games didn't concede a goal. 6.63 average rating. He did very well. I'm definitely keeping him around, and loads of teams were coming in for him during the season, so it just shows how good a player he is. Next up, we've got Lee Phillips. He was a mainstay in the team. 41 games, one goal, a couple of Man of the Match awards. Where did he come from? He's been. This is his third season. He came from Koniski as well, although he came to us via Dunfermline. Unfortunately, he's expecting to leave the club. He wants to move to a new club. The reason I haven't sold him yet is because he's got another two years on his contract, so I'm going to I might try and keep him around for at least another year. Uh, it really just depends on finances and that sort of thing. But he was a, he was here. He played a lot. Keith McDonough. He's a new signing. I, I don't know why he never came up. But he was signed for 320000 from Bohemians. He was a very good left back in the Irish League, it looked like. So I took a chance on him and... 
as you can see, uh, I would say it's paid dividends. He's played 38 games, 7.05 average rating. Very steady player, and he's only 22. Phil Cave, after spending years in our team as a backup player, he's had two incredible seasons where he's been a mainstay in the team. 36 games this season, he did get one assist to be fair, 6.92 average rating, but he did very, very well in the centre of defence. Dean Graham, our new signing from Hibernian, and he played just 15 games, but still played an important role. We don't have as many central defenders as we did last season, so that was good. But we had to replace the likes of Martin Klein, and Turner and so we brought in Dean Graham but that's why that's why one he's in the team and two he got as many starts as he did was because we needed him at times uh, at points during the season Stephen Brennan is still around he's been at the club for a long time since 2008 in game time he got seven average rating 20 games he didn't play every game this season he is getting older I did actually sign him up on a new two-year deal because I thought like his mental statistics and everything like that where else are we going to find a better right back so that's why I signed him up his right back slot was occupied mostly by Neil Williams who stepped up he was a, a really good player I signed him from Livingston he was having a torrid time at Livingston getting played out of position but I decided to take him to the club okay his second season didn't go as well but this season was his best by far you could tell based on our league position a 7.07 .07 average rating 26 appearances a few assists in there David Murphy previously had been a mainstay at left back he hasn't played much this season only has one more year on his contract I think I'm going to try to hang on to him for that final year but he did play eight games he did all right so he's a worthy left back uh, a worthy backup at left back I should I'd say. Kirk Broadfoot, I would say I underrate him, maybe take him for granted a bit too much, but he's 30 now. He's one of the few real life players left in the team. He's been at our club for a good eight years. Previously he hasn't played as much, but the last two years he's been a mainstay in the team. He played in about, what, 36 games this season, three goals, three assists. I mainly use him at defensive midfield, but then if we switch to five at the back, he can just drop back, which is very useful. So I'm glad we've got him. We've got him for another three years which is good. Zoltan Kiss, the legend himself. I think one thing that Football Manager 2005 lacks is in the information tab of a club it doesn't have like, oh it does have favourite personnel. Then why aren't any of my players in it? Why isn't Jason Scotland in it? Maybe it doesn't add new players to it, I don't know. But if this favoured personnel tab added players from the game to it, I have no doubt that Zoltan Kiss would be one of them. He is 34 now, he will be 35 come the start of next season. He is declining a lot. He played in 24 games a season, did alright. Maybe not as well as he has done in previous seasons, but he has been in the club for a very long time as well. Just ignore this, um, <laughs> this one season he had with Motherwell. He was actually injured for four months of the season, which is partly why I brought Albertin as cover for right midfield. Fodil Hadge. He is a defensive midfielder whose name I've never pronounced on camera and I probably pronounced it wrongly but he's 32 now. He's played at the club since 2008. He played in 32 games this season. Played very very well. 7.34 average rating. Four goals. Five assists. He had a very very solid season. Sean Thornton as well. Seven goals from the midfield which is fantastic. He'll be at the club for another uh, year. He played his part in 41 games this season. Some off the bench but some starts as well. Uh, but how long has he been at the club? He's been at the club since 2009, so that's, what, six seasons. A lot of people at this in this team have been at the club a long time, which is really, it's, you know, it just shows I was building a team towards this sort of success. Gary McLaughlin was our new signing again, played 11 games, did all right. That was in half a season as well. So he came from Linfield for how much? 180,000? Pretty darn good deal, I would say. Oh yeah, we just about forgot about Michael Williams. He was a... Uh, well, he only played in about nine games a season uh, because I didn't really use wide midfielders. But he's going to hopefully be here for another few years. He's been here since 2011, but the reason it doesn't show it like that is because he's been out on loan a lot. He went to Dundee twice, he went to Motherwell. He did fairly well out on loan. Now he's got his chance with the first team, although he didn't play that much. He'll hopefully get more game time next season. David Lawler, now getting paid 17 grand a week thanks to my awesome contract negotiation skills. He played 37 games this season, uh, 5 goals, 10 assists. I wonder if we're losing money because of his appearance bonus and his goal bonus and his assist bonus. Because that's 1.8 grand per appearance or goal or assist. And he got 5 goals, 10 assists. That is a lot of, that's like 80 grand we lost just based on his assists. So maybe that's part of the reason. Anyway, he got 7.3 average rating. He's been capped a bunch for Ireland now. He's done very, very well. He's well worth the 17 grand per week, that's for sure. Chris Burke announced his retirement towards the back end of last season. The reason for that was because he had 
uh, featured very, very little uh, the previous year, just 11 games, although he had been a mainstay the, like, the previous few years. This season, though, he played basically every game, 43 games, 5 goals, 7 assists. He's been at the club since uh, 2008, so that's like 7 years he's been here, and he did very well this year. I, I might try and persuade him to reconsider his retirement, but I don't think he will. He is on six grand a week, so it'll be good to get him off the wage bill. Chris Burke, key player. Uh, Albert, he was used just off the bench. Did get a, an important goal, though. Matthew Lewis, he was a mainstay at left midfield or on the left wing. Uh, he's a very, very good player. He's got the potential to go to a big club, honestly. He's been at the club for four years, but loads and loads of clubs want him. Uh, I had loads of bids coming in for him. He is going to be here until 2019. I'm going to try and keep a hold of him. Uh, I'm not going to sell him just for the sake of it, so that'll be fine. Wh whoever was he originally? He was signed from Connor's Key as well. Connor's Key seems to produce a lot of good players. Slavomir Pesko, uh, our Polish striker, he played in uh, 14 games this season. He didn't do that well, He's he didn't score. I kind of wanted to sell him. My awesome contract negotiation skills have left him here uh, for another three years, which is a, a bit annoying as he won't get much game time. He still played an important part. His average rating was was 6.79, which isn't bad. Oh, now for this guy. This is awkward because he's 16 still, this guy, Alan Curran. 16, he's got pretty good stats. Problem is, at 16, anyone can come in and bid for him, which is probably what's going to happen. I was really hoping he would stick around. He played in 25 games, mainly off the bench, because he can play at left midfield and up front. He scored five goals, five assists, got an above seven average rating. I mean, if I can somehow get him to 17th birthday and time down on a contract, that would be fantastic. But uh, unfortunately, it looks like he's going to leave. Anyway, Alan Anderson didn't play that much, got two goals, one assist. He really needs to step up next season for, well, I'll explain why in a minute, but... He did play 15 games. His rating's alright, but he needs to step up goals-wise next season. He needs to step up goals-wise because John Cook won't be here. He is joining Celtic, our title challengers, our title rivals. He's going to join them at the start of June. Um, there's a few reasons for this. For starters, his contract's running out in a year, uh, at which point he'll probably just leave for free. He's also on seven grand a week, so if we sell him, that'll free up some of the wage budget. The downside is, though, he had an awesome season. 43 games, 37 goals. Most of them were pile drivers from 30 yards, which is something we will definitely miss. To be honest, I'm glad we won the league this season while we had him, because next season, we're not going to have him, and therefore that's going to lessen our chance of winning the league, so I'm glad we won it now while we had him. I kind of think it's a mistake, but at the end of the day, we're only going to get one more year out of him, and he's going for 2.5 million, which I think will be our record for an outgoing player. The thing is, him and Jason Scotland are just like unique players, because they just seem to score all the time. None of my other strikers are that good, so we need to find another one that is that good, because his goal, look at the the goal scoring chart 37 and that's 30 ahead of our next two scoring players who are midfielders Matthew Lewis and Sean Thord that's going to be a big big loss for our team so we just need to hope that one of our other strikers step up we could get relegated next season without his goals that's for sure Michael Mitchell barely played this season he is a, a player that came out of our academy to be fair he's been here for now seven years uh, he has not actually scored he's scored three goals one season for us but he hasn't scored since. I really, really want him to step up because he's done very, very well. We're just going to have to keep pushing him, see what he can do. But I worry about this guy, that's for sure. And finally, Craig Young scored one goal this season. Five games off the bench. Like Michael Mitchell, he didn't really play that much. But he has improved a lot since he arrived at our club. He came from Maccabi Hafia in uh, Israel. Played with us since 2009. He's played almost every season. He had one loan spell with Dundee in which he got a load of goals. And he's scored in just about every season. So yeah, we're going to try and keep him around. Loads of clubs are sniffing around him as you can see. Fulham and... Well, Fulham are in the Premier Division, although it looks like they got relegated. That was our team. Obviously, as I said, we're losing our top scorer, which uh, isn't so good. But... I had to cash in on him now or risk losing him for free in a year and I might have to do the same with David Lawler uh, because he'll be gone in two years. Well, that's the thing, John Cook would have accepted a new contract so I'm glad I got the money for him. Uh, but the thing is, that's the issue, loads of these players want out. I just got rid of a batch of players that wanted out and now even more players want out. You know, Lee Phillips, David Lawler, they they all want out. Same with Matthew Lewis, all the, all the good players, which is understandable but I mean, we've just won the league. If they stayed around and we got good players in, 
Who knows? We could win the league again. We could make inroads in Europe. But no, that's just how the game works, I think. It is quite annoying. You can't communicate with the players directly. The only way to communicate with them... Well, there is no way, really. <laughs> the only way to communicate them is either by fining them or releasing a media story, and I don't really do either that often. And Zoltan Kiss is unhappy because he's lost confidence in his manager's ability. Um, <clears throat> hello? Um, Brian Loudrup still believes we need to strengthen our squad to remain in a safe position in the Premier Division. That's a fair opinion, but, you know, I did better than that. It's funny, because last season we finished 8th. Uh, as you can see, the board confidence for us, or the board expectation, was to stay clear of relegation. Well, I think I've managed that. Let's have a look at the messages that you get for winning the Premier Division, or the Premier League. There you go. The Douglas brings glory to St Johnston. We were given a million quid for our final position, and that's a new record high for finishing. Let's have a look at the players, player of the year and all that. None of our players came in the top three of those awards. Oh, Matthew Lewis won the Scottish Young Player of the Year. David Lawler came sec eh, came third, sorry, which is pretty impressive. So that's two of our players in the top three. Team of the Year, John Cook and Lee Phillips were the only players in. Uh, top goal scorer, I'll give you one guess. <laughs> yep, John Cook. John Cook finished top scorer for the third year running. It's the seventh year running that one of our players has been in the top uh, top of the charts, seventh year running, ninth year, eighth year out of nine, that one of our players has topped the scoring charts, which is incredible. Finally, the important one, that's right, manager of the year was me. I think this is the first time I've ever won the manager of the year awards. Yep, I've been in this division for 10 years, never won it, finally I've won it. Uh, I had to win the league to win it, but I mean, that's okay. Football writers of the year is pretty much the same as players player of the year. And obviously, goal of the season comes from John Cook for a strike he had against Gretna, who actually got relegated. Oh, Motherwell got relegated. I thought Gretna were going to go down, but Motherwell ended up getting relegated. But yeah, two of John Cook's goals came in the top two for the goal of the season. Briefly, I want to speak about the finances. We're down to two million, which isn't great. Uh, I'm not sure why this is. Obviously, our expenditure is pretty high. That could be because of the wage bill. The salary bill was lower than the budget for most of the season until halfway the halfway point when I signed two players. You would expect it not to have dropped as much. It's not like it's 30,000 over. So I, I I don't really understand. The only thing I've got a control over is the wage bill. So it is by and large out of my control. But I'm going to probably have to get rid of a few players just to level things out. We were at 10 million at one point. Like at, at our height, when we were finishing like second in the league, we were at like 10 million for a balance. And now we're down, like we lost so much last season. We've been struggling ever since. That's the thing though. You can actually measure, and I, I, I'm glad I remembered to do this. If you go to competitions, there we go. Winner 2015. If you go to domestic leagues, you can actually measure our success this season against previous seasons in this division. So first season, we won the first division, finished first. Uh, so that was pretty easy. Then we finished 11th, just narrowly avoiding relegation. Then we gradually improved, got to second. That was a peak. And then we started dipping 4th, 6th, 8th. And then all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, we finished first. It should be noted that we actually got one less point this season when we won the league than when we finished second in 2010-2011. Goals-wise, we scored the same amount as we scored in that season. But we actually scored even more goals the season before that in 2009-2010. Jason Scott might have had something to do with it. We conceded the least amount of goals this season compared with any previous SPL season. Goal difference was the best, uh, just by one. Compared with the season we came second, we won the most games, or the joint most games. And this is the first time for about, what's that, five years that we drew a single figure number of games. Winning the first division in the first season was unbelievable, but to go ten years in this division, building a couple of teams, I would say. I would say about three teams. I've built about three teams in my time here just because of the turnover of players. It's so drastic in this version of the game. I've had to build and rebuild. Finally, I've got a team that's league champions. It's, it's such a such a good feeling that all that work really pays off. I'll go over the games now. Might as well. The main tactics we used was a 4-5-1. I, I just stuck with it. We, we might have to change it next season because... I'm not convinced this tactic lends itself well to really providing strikers with options. Uh, John Cook's instructed to hold up the ball. He never really did that, to be honest. He just went for a goal every time. Uh, hopefully, whoever stands in that position next season won't 
just a uh, blast a ball from 30 yards out. It works when you've got a long shot stat of 20, it doesn't really work when it's not 20. But the other formation I use was, well I used a 4-4-2 at the start of the season, but I also used a 5-3-2 defensive, just a, a default 5-3-2 defensive when we're trying to defend leads. So those are the two formations I mainly used. Didn't use an awful lot, that's alright. Let's get on to fixtures. Pre-season friendlies went very, very well. Um, we won all of them. Beat Hibs 2-0. We beat Monaco 3-1. We then beat Cardiff City 2-0, who are in the Championship. And then we beat Sunderland 2-1, who are also in the Championship. So three or four big results there. Hibs, of course, weren't in our division this season, although they will be next season because they won the first division. Surprise, surprise. First game of the season was against Hart Midlothian. Um, bit of late drama. Uh, John Cook got our goal in 32 minutes. Unfortunately, Stephen Brennan scored an own goal with six minutes to go. Once again, a late equaliser to cost us three points. Thankfully, that didn't cost us come the end of the season. But let's be honest, at the time I was thinking, uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go, this ain't good. First game in Europe was against Leotar from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. We won 1-0 thanks to a John Cook strike. This was the home leg. Unfortunately, we should have battered them. 15 shots, 8 on target. Uh, their keeper got man of the match, no surprise. It was just one of those games. We won 1-0, which was good at the time, but we should have scored more. Then, it was back to league duty. We lost 2-0 to Rangers. Graham Weir scored. He always seems to score against us. But we made up for it in the next game. It was a home game. Second home game of the season against newly promoted Gretna, we won at 4-1, Alan Anderson scored on 5 minutes, and then John Cook scored a casual hat-trick on 12 minutes, 49 minutes, and then he scored a, a penalty on 70 minutes to complete the hat-trick. Neil Collins pulled one back a few minutes later, but it was too little too late, and we got the 3 points. Then it was back to Europe, and our inability to score in the first leg it meant we crashed out here. I could see this coming from a mile away. They were on top this game. To be fair, we did get a lot of chances too. Eight on target out of 19, but they scored two goals and won 2-1 in aggregate. This was only the second qualifying round of the Europa League, which I was very disappointed to lose out in. Before I forget, actually, so you remember last season, we beat Betis in the Eurovaz, okay? So keep that in mind. We beat Betis in the Eurovaz. Look... Look who got to the final of the Euro Cup this season. <laughs> yeah, Real Betis. So, yeah, and that we only beat them, what, about a year ago, so, or, well, technically two years ago. Incredible. So after getting knocked out of European competitions, we lost in the league to Cali, Alan Manis's new team. They scored two goals. We, we were probably chasing in the end, which is why they got a second, but there you go. Uh, we then lost to Dundee United away from home. Alan Anderson got our goal, but it was too little too late, as they had already won the league. So at that point, we'd had three defeats, one draw, and a win. So that's four points out of about, I don't know, six games, five games. It was not the form of a champion, basically. We were down at 10th position, and my prediction about getting relegated was coming back into my head. Thankfully, our form picked up. Not in this game, really. We drew 2 a uh, 1-1, sorry, with Aberdeen. John Cook, obviously, got our goal. Uh, Andy Campbell equalised for them later in the game. We managed to beat Celtic. This was our where our form picked up, John Cook got a double, and Keith Keane also scored one of his goals this season, uh, as we put Celtic to the sword, getting three points, very important three points there. Following this, we beat Livingston 5-0, John Cook had his four-goal haul game, his traditional four-goal haul game, uh, Chris Burke scored in uh, the opener, then John Cook scored on 39, 48, 61, and 72 minutes. That gave us a good 5-0 away victory at Livingston and three points. Then, coming up after this, was a 3-1 away win against Kilmarnock, which was good. Uh, they did open the scoring through David Clarkson, but David Lawler scored a double on 39 minutes and on 54 minutes, and Sean Thornton put the victory beyond doubt on 90 minutes. So that was a good win there. Our next game was against Dunfermline. nil no draw. Pretty boring. Pretty dire. We probably should have done better, but we didn't. Then we beat bottom of the league Motherwell. 3-0. John Cook with a casual hat-trick. 34 minutes, 51 minutes and 76 minutes. That was a very vital three points there. They're all, all three points are vital when you're going for the league championship. Although, as I said, we weren't really up the top of the league at this point. 
Uh, this was only back in October. Last game of October was a League Cup third round game. Now, you know how much bad luck I've had with the League Cup over the save. I've lost out multiple times in the third round to lower division sides. We've got Stenhouse Muir, who are usually in the third tier of Scottish football, or in the fourth tier. I clicked on them and found they were actually in the second tier, so they were, and they were actually top at the time we played them. So I was pretty worried going into this game. Thankfully, though, I don't know how we did it, but it was nil-nil until 30 minutes to go when Matthew Lewis broke the deadline. Lock, and then our Algerian central midfielder uh, netted in the 90th minute to put the result beyond doubt. So I always complain about the game being rigged against me in this this cup competition. It wasn't this time, or it kind of was, because we didn't score for the first 13 uh, for the first 77 minutes. I who cares? We won the game. That's the main thing. We got through to the quarterfinal of the League Cup. It's back to League duty. Uh, we beat Hearts uh, away from home 2-1. Our Algerian central midfielder opened the scoring after just three minutes. John Cook then netted a penalty. They did pull one back pretty quickly, but it was the three points that were going with us. Our next game was against Rangers. We did to them what we did to Celtic. A 3-0 victory. Admittedly, they did have a player sent off when it was only 1-0, but that doesn't matter. Uh, John Cook netted a penalty after 8 minutes. Alan Curran, our 16-year-old striker slash winger, he got two goals on 46 minutes and on 77 minutes uh, to seal the victory. We then played Gretna in our second game against them. This was away from home, though. Didn't do that well. Matthew Lewis opened the scoring on 31 minutes. Uh, they had a player sent off. They then scored a penalty and they held on with 10 men in what was a very frustrating game. It's a game like this that could have costed us the championship. If one of the old firm had actually hit form throughout the season, this could have costed us the championship. Final game of November. 4-1 victory over Cali. I always like beating Cali for some reason. Matthew Lewis, Chris Burke... John Cook and Sean Thornton scored all of our goals. Uh, they pulled one back with two minutes to go, albeit we did score right after they did uh, in injury time. So pretty weird end to the game, but we got the three points. That's the main thing. Our next game was in the League Cup quarterfinal against second tier Falkirk. We beat them 2-0. Goals from our Algerian centre midfielder and Lee Phillips on 81 minutes got us the win and progressed to the semi-finals of the League Cup. Back to drawing with Aberdeen. Pretty frustrating game. They took the lead on 25 minutes through Zidane. That's right, their best player's called Zidane. Interesting stuff there. John Cook, though, equalised for us. And Alan Curran, our 16-year-old striker, put us in front for the first time in the game. But then, unfortunately, they netted an equaliser with 18 minutes remaining. So that wasn't particularly pleasing. This was, though. We beat last year's league champions, Dungeon United, John Cook, Netted on 23 minutes, David Lawler netted a penalty on 90 minutes to give us the win there, a vital win. We then got the same scoreline at home to Kilmarnock. To be fair, they did have a player sent off when the score was only 1-0. Matthew Lewis made it 1-0 and Keith Keane made sure of victory with two minutes remaining. Seems like we scored a lot of late goals when we were already winning. Which is fine by me, because that just makes sure of victory. And it probably also is explained by the fact that a lot of teams chase victories. A lot of the AI teams chase victories automatically in this game. So that's why we get a lot of late goals, it seems. On to a Boxing Day clash with Celtic. Didn't go so well. Away from home, we lost to Stephen Miller strike. We did get a lot of shots on goal, to be fair, but we just weren't clinical. And they were. First defeat in quite a long time, it must be said. But there you go. Our next game didn't go that well either. A 1-1 draw with Livingston. They netted a late, late equaliser, which I cannot tell you how frustrating that was. It was from a corner as well. I don't think our corners are set up well uh, properly with this tactic. Because I usually put wingers on the post and there was fullbacks on the post. So I might have to look into it. Not that it really made a difference because we won the league. So <laughs> anyway, John Cook netted our goal though on 61 minutes and then obviously the inevitable happened. So our second game of 2015 was in the Scottish Cup. A tuna win over second tier Partick. John Cook got both our goals early in the game and early in the second half. So that was good. Gave us progress to the fourth round of the Scottish Cup. Then after that, it was a victory over Dunfermline away from home in the league. Very important three points there. Very interesting game. Sean Thornton put us ahead with 22 minutes remaining. Then Gareth Williams netted what looked like a late equaliser for them. But Perseverance got us a second goal and a winner. Kirk Broadfoot netted deep into injury time to give us 
the three points from this game, which was very, very important. Good one there. I actually checked my past meetings against Dunfermline, and I think they've actually won more than I have, so pretty interesting stuff there. Anyway, we then beat Motherwell 3-0, uh, no surprise given their bad form. John Cook netted a double on 51 minutes and 16 minutes, and Albert netted on his debut, so that was pretty pleasing to see that go in. Uh, following this, we then had the League Cup semi-final, against Hartman Lothian and it was a very 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 strange game but we won which is the main thing John Cook put us 2-0 up inside the first 20 minutes with a goal in 4 minutes and on 18 minutes Paul Clark and Julian Keller then netted a quick fire double just before half time to draw the scores level to 2-2 Matthew Lewis then put us back in front on 50 minutes Paul Clark unfortunately netted an equaliser with 18 minutes left of normal time Julian Keller got injured on 75 minutes it then went to extra time and they had a player sent off late on it was too late for that to make a difference but the game went to penalties after an enthralling 3-3 draw would have looked amazing for the neutral. And it's funny because usually when I play cup games and it goes to penalties, usually for some odd reason I seem to have subbed off all my uh, good penalty takers. Not intentionally of course, I've just subbed them off because they need rested or they weren't playing well or whatever. This was one of the first times in living memory I had just about every single good penalty taker at the club on the pitch. So I had five good penalty takers plus a few extra to take if it went to sudden death. Thankfully that didn't happen. Thankfully the first three scored penalties. Thankfully they missed three of theirs. We scored all of ours and that sent us through to the final of the League Cup for the second time in a couple of years actually. Where we would meet second tier Hibernian. Pretty promising stuff there. Anyway, it was back to league duty. We beat exactly the same team that we just beat in the cup. We beat Hearts in the league. Uh, John Cook scored a double, but only after Gary Ritchie had put Hearts 1-0 up. Uh, John Cook scored immediately before half-time and then just after the hour mark to get us three points from this game. Following this, we were in the Scottish Cup. Unfortunately, our defence of the Scottish Cup, because of course we won it last year, our defence came to an end at Parkhead in Glasgow. Uh, David Stewart and Paul Gallagher scored for Celtic. There was not much we could do. I mean, yeah, they just... They dominated us, but we did have a lot of chances as well. It could have gone... I, I want to say it could have gone either way, but Celtic win, they were just too strong for us. That meant we could focus on the league. No, no draw with Rangers. I cannot tell you how much I love this point against Rangers because they absolutely battered us. <laughs> 16 shots, 5 on target. I mean, they're... they're their shot accuracy was pretty garbage, but they just, they were all over us. I could not see us winning that game, so a draw was the best I could hope for. It was away from home as well, so there you go. Point against Rangers, gonna take it. 5-0 victory over Gretna, followed that. John Cook scored, Alan Curran got a double on 29 minutes and 45 minutes. Then Kirk Broadfoot scored, as did Sean Thornton, so a good solid 5-0 victory. Following this, we then beat Cali Thistle away from home. John Cook got a double, including a winner from the penalty spot. It's the sort of game we would have drawn, but thankfully we got a penalty out of nothing, and John Cook scored it. That is effectively what gave us the three points. We were ahead for only three minutes originally before they equalised. We beat Dungeon United away from home, 3-0. John Cook scored early in the game, and then Sean Thornton got a quick-fire double to prove his goal-scoring prowess and to get us the win, which was important. We then beat Hibs in the League Cup final to win our second League Cup. This was probably, of all the finals I've done in the save, this was probably the most interesting, most intense. First half goes by, Chris Burke scores on 35 minutes. John Cook then doubles our advantage immediately before half time. But then in the second half, Kevin Campbell nets a double for Hibernian, one from the penalty spot and a header to draw it back to 2-2 and I'm thinking rats, we're going to, you know, we're going to lose this. But thankfully, Matthew Lewis popped up with the goods with 6 minutes remaining. He netted a, a late winner to give us our second League Cup triumph in three seasons. I think we, we won it, let's have a look at past winners, yep we won it in 2013 so this is our second triumph in three years which is good and yeah we did come runner up in this tournament IRL 20 years ago. That was our first success of the season, uh, a League Cup victory which is good but that meant we just had league games left. Our next league game was against Kilmarnock 
1-0 victory. Matthew Lewis netted. Uh, Gary McLaughlin got sent off with 16 minutes remaining. That's why he got fined. That's why he's unhappy. But we held out for the win, which is the main thing. And it's these sorts of victories that you start to see the, like, the more the season goes on. And it's these sorts of victory... Uh, that define champions really in football. Celtic beat us 1-0 at home. Uh, very disappointed. We could have won the game. I mean, our shot accuracy wasn't that good either, but we could have won the game. But Celtic, but Celtic made it three wins against us this season. Admittedly, all the wins have been low scoring, 1-0 or 2-0. Uh, but at this point in the season, we really are jostling for position. As you can see, we've kind of worked our way up. We've, we've been in good form. We've barely lost. Overall, we've worked our way up from 10th position and we're now second or first. We're vying for the league championship at this point. So these games against the old firm mean everything. But unfortunately we lost this one. This was even worse than the Celtic game. We lost 2-0 to Livingston. Our shot accuracy was garbage. Not much else needs to be said. That's two defeats on the bounce. No goals scored. Very disappointing. Thankfully we bring it back together with a victory over Aberdeen. Very, very important. Kirk Broadfoot netted the opener on 39 minutes. John Cook then scored on 43. Our Polish left winger Slavomir Peshko, I'd brought him on the left because Matthew Lewis had been suspended. He got sent off, which was fantastic, but thankfully John Cook netted on the error mark to make it 3-0 and we held out for the whole game to get the three points there. Very important. Aberdeen were also a title rivals, kind of, although they did fall away towards the end. Next up, it was Dunfermline. 2-0 victory at home to them. David Lawler scored in 38 minutes. Craig Young came off the bench to get his only goal of the season with six minutes remaining to put the points in the bag. A few games before the league split, we played Aberdeen on the Saturday on the 11th of April, but then we played Dunfermline a day later. I've never seen that in Football Manager before. Usually what happens is if there's games that, like games in hand that you need to play, usually they're like the split is postponed until those games are played. At least that's what happens with the likes of Celtic and Rangers when they're in Europe. But for some reason, we had to play on two consecutive days. Thankfully, we won both. The reason I noticed this was because usually my players, they're not tired. I mean, one or two of them are, like if they're coming back from injury or they've had a particularly tough game. But we beat Aberdeen 3-0. I wasn't paying attention to the dates. The squad list came up for the next game against Dunfermline. I didn't know it was the day after. Looked at the condition of my players and a lot of them were suffering. And I was like, wait, wait, why? And then I realised it was because this was being played a day later. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, that didn't cost us. Five goals in two games. No goals conceded. This wasn't so pleasing. 1-1 one, one draw with Motherwell. They scored on 23 minutes. Sean Thornton equalised with a free kick about 15 minutes later. We had 10 shots on target. Their keeper didn't even get Man of the Match award. 10 shots on target. I couldn't really ask much more from them, to be honest with you. But that's just the way some games go. And fortunately, this was a 1-1 draw. That was the final game before the split. We had Rangers, Celtic, Hearts, Aberdeen and Livingston to play before the league was decided. At this point, I can't remember exactly how the league was, but I think we were locked on points with both Celtic and Rangers. It was like 61, 61, 61 or something like that. So it was very, very, very tight. Similar to last season and the season before that. It's always been tight up at the top. First game. And this is where our championship winning form comes to the forefront. First game was a 1-0 win over Livingston. Doesn't matter how you win, as long as you win. 19 minutes to go. David Lawler pops up gets the all-important winner. Uh, they did have a player sent off with four minutes remaining, which kind of helped, uh, eased the pressure slightly, but the main thing was we got the goal, we got the three points. Then we had to play Rangers, 1-0 win at home. Very, very, very important. Michael Williams netted after nine minutes. Well, I think that was his only goal of the season, but nonetheless, a very important goal, and that gave us three vital points. At this point, the old firm, Rangers and Celtic, in this game, and IRL, they're very strong. You cannot rely on them slipping up, so you have to keep winning. Which is why I was very disappointed when we lost 5-2 to Hearts. Now, if you think about this, we conceded 30 goals. One sixth of the goals we conceded in the league came in this one game. The worst part was we were 1-0 up. Chris Burke scored for us. They then scored two quick-fire goals. John Cook pulled one back. Don't know if we were... I don't think we were chasing the game. I think I was happy with the draw. 
well, I wasn't happy with the draw, but I don't think I was chasing the game yet. But then they, they scored a goal. I then had to chase the game and then they scored two more, which was very, very disappointing. The one saving grace that came out this 5-2 loss was that Aberdeen beat Celtic. So we were still level in points with Celtic. At this point, because I'd beat Rangers and Rangers had drawn with Celtic, Celtic and I were locked on points ahead of them. It was like three or five points or whatever. So we were still level in points, even though we'd lost. And as you can see, at the point the league finished, we'd uh, superior goal difference to Celtic so we were just in front of them on goal difference but yeah that could have been pivotal that game fortunately it wasn't but could have been anyway 5-2 lost to Hearts was followed up by yet another 1-0 victory over Aberdeen now this was interesting as you can see we netted in the final minute late goal I never check latest scores when the game's going on but for some reason I just thought to myself right we're drawing with Aberdeen I would like to see if Celtic are winning so I can plan my next manoeuvre, right, with tactics. Do I hold for a draw? Do I press and attack and try to get a winner? I checked the scores. Celtic were losing to 6th place Livingston. So I thought to myself, if we win this game, the final game of the season is against Celtic. If we win this game, that basically wins us the title unless we capitulate against Celtic. So I pressed for the win, went all out attack, and our Algerian midfielder, he netted on 90 minutes, well, it was deep into injury time, it was basically the last highlight of the game he netted to give us a vital three points, 1-0 victory over the previous, well, they weren't league champions last season, but they've been league champions in the past. We got a victory against the champions of the past, the champions of the present against champions of the past. Vital three points there. So that meant, going into the final game of the season, we were on 70 four points and yeah you can already tell what the result was <laughs> but we were on 74 points Celtic were on 71 points we had a goal difference of plus five better than them if we lost 1-0 or 2-0 we would still be champions however if we lost 3-0 or we lost by three goals 4-1 5-2 6-3 etc etc they would win the league so we just had to not lose by three goals and we would be champions. It was that simple. If we'd lost the league, it would have been worse than that other time we came second when we lost the league on the last day of the season. But thankfully, we managed to draw 1-1, one, no, uh, one, one, sorry. Two players got sent off for both our teams. Chris Burke netted on 22 minutes, which was vital because that meant that they now had to score four goals. Stuart Adams equalised for them just before half time. David Lawler got himself sent off with 20 minutes remaining. Thankfully, we held out and they got someone sent off as well. So that kind of helped um, but that 1-1 draw handed us the league title our first league triumph first in the save so yeah it was just it was just a fantastic occasion as you can see much of our league winning form in this latter part of the season came from 1-0 victories we won a lot of games 1-0 post split three of our five games were 1-0 we just got the job done and that's that's really all you can ask for obviously I would have liked to have won more but at the end of the day, no one got more points than us. And that's why we won the league. So overall, a fantastic season. It also means we qualify for the Champions League next year. I would really, really like to finish top three because then we either get, you know, progress into the Champions League knockout stages or progress into the Europa League knockout stages. Either one, not bothered. Unfortunately, as I said, we're losing John Cook, so we won't have him. So yeah, I'm going to have to figure that one out. The good news is I've won the league. Uh, my plan was to kind of end the save once we won the league, but I can't really do that because we've got such a good squad. Okay, it might break up because loads of people are coming in for my players, but we've got a good squad. We're in the Champions League. I've had a lot of good success in the save. We've won two Scottish Cups, two League Cups. We've won the First Division, but more importantly, we've won the league. Like, the league is the pinnacle. Like, I'm going to play for another few seasons. I'm going to try and get beyond the present day. Currently, the date of recording is 2nd of November 2018. I'm going to try and get to the 2018-19 season or even the 2019-20 season and I think I'll end it there once we get beyond the present day. If I get sacked, obviously I'll probably finish it then. A few things left to note, as you can see there, two league wins, four cup wins. Uh, we did obviously do the double uh, this season by winning the league and the league cup, which is a fantastic achievement. Um, Celtic and Rangers contested the Scottish Cup final. Obviously Celtic won it. They were the team that knocked us out. I feel like if we'd beaten them, we would have had a good chance of winning it because their run to the final was a little easier, but obviously... The treble just wasn't to be. But, you know, can't be too greedy. Double, I'll take it. Um, another thing was the media. I barely get any managers commenting 
on my team. As you can see, the last time someone commented on my team was Paul Sturrock um, back in 2011, but three managers or two managers commented three times on my team before games this season. First time it was Ron, uh, Roy Aitken, who was manager of Rangers. He then did it again, and then it was Gordon Strachan of Hearts. Now, the Gordon Strachan situation, the Hearts team actually went on to win that game 5-2, so that wasn't so good. The two Rangers games, though, we won one of them and we drew the other one nil nil. My approach to this, when I saw the comments being made, I saw that, well, I saw the Rangers team had a high determination level, so I decided not to respond both times to Roy Aitken. And then with Gordon Strachan, I didn't respond to him either. I remember the story of that Newcastle United manager whose name I forget, who Sir Alex Ferguson called out or basically said his team were going to fail or whatever. And then he had an outburst against him and his team ended up losing and they lost a 12-point lead. I just thought, best not respond. Best just let the footballers do the talking. Yeah, just thought I'd point that out, that managers had actually spoken about our team. As you can see, I had a lot of media dealings in, in the first, like, two or three years and then after that, barely any. Anyway, don't want to ramble too much. I cannot tell you how great it is to win the league. In the past, winning the league has been good, but this probably feels the best because, well, for one thing, it's a team that is made up entirely of players that I signed, and it comes after 10 years of being in this division, trying to win the league. we finally managed it at the 10th attempt. What more can I say? Fantastic. It's the pinnacle. Anyway, that is the end of the video. Thank you very, very much for watching and following this series. If you have been, uh, I will hopefully continue for at least another three or four years to get beyond the present day, just to say I've done it. Until next time, thank you for watching. I will see you later.